Good everyone and welcome to today's Living Life. Misconceptions can be fun. And I'm from Australia, um, and I think that a lot of misconceptions about Australia, people in Australia, animals in Australia especially. I mean, for example, a lot of people think that we have kangaroos and koalas hanging on you know, every other tree. And you know, kangaroos just kind of hop across your street anytime and you know, anywhere, everywhere in Sydney and so forth. I'm sorry, that doesn't happen. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Koalas, we have to go to zoos to look at koalas. We have to go to zoos, um, special places to look at kangaroos and wallabies too. That's another thing. Most people think kangaroos and uh, wallabies are the same thing. They're actually very different. Kangaroos are the big giant ones. Wallabies are the shorter, cuter, fuzzier ones. And then this brings us to misconceptions that can be dangerous. Now, um, a lot of people think, again, uh, that kangaroos and koalas are very harmless. Um, I mean, they can be, but they can also be very not harmless. Kangaroos are massive and strong. They can actually be like six feet, like taller than, you know, people, and they are as strong. They can uh, fight, and you know, the whole pun punching kangaroo thing, it's kind of true. They can punch, but they can also lean back on their tail and kick you know, with their uh, legs and feet, which are very strong as well. And koalas, as cute and cuddly as they are, they're also very smelly, uh, but they also have really sharp and long claws that can gash you like bone deep if, uh, if they need to as well. So they're not always like just cute and harmless and cuddly. Misconceptions can be fun, but also dangerous. And in spiritual life, this applies. And I think especially can lead us to dangerous paths is if we follow misconceptions as well. And we're gonna deal with one of those things. So let's read the passage and then we'll continue. Romans chapter 6 verses 1 through 11 What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means, we are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Now you remember two days ago, I said that uh, the theme and the idea of death is a very big and prevalent one uh, in chapter five and six of Romans. In today's passage alone, there are six, 15, at least 15 instances um, and examples of the word death and relate, other related words, including crucified, which is basically death, uh, that is found in verse six. Now, this is paired with the, the theme and the idea of life and new life, although in terms of occurrence, it's not as um, frequent and many. So then to summarize the passage, we have death and sin versus life and resurrection. And the interesting thing is the misconception that I mentioned before uh, about sin, we see in verses, well, throughout the passage, but if we look at verses 1 and 2, and let me read it in the NLT, uh, New Living Translation, it says, Well then, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? Of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Now, in verse 1, uh, verb, uh, sin is a verb, right? So we continue on sinning. It's a verb. But then the counter in verse 2 is unexpected. We have 
die to sin, it says, and we should no longer be living in it. So, you know, if I would have expected, if it was me, I would have, you know, wrote or said something like, you know, to stop sinning, you know, don't sin, you shouldn't sin. But Paul actually doesn't say any of these things. As opposed to sinning, it's not about not sinning. But what is it? It's no longer living in sin. We have died to sin, right? So, and we have joined with Christ in his death. And then our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. Sin is not about doing or not doing or should or shouldn't do. It's actually about life and death. It's about dying to and living, in or not. I mean, isn't that interesting? It's actually huge. Like, I need much more time to kind of think through this, process this, and, you know, to eventually, you know, give a message or a sermon about this to really teach it. But, you know, we don't have that much time. And to keep it short, um, what does this mean then, right? This interesting thing. Right? Um, possible misconception about sin, what does it mean? And as kind of big and heavy and confusing as it may be, I would even you know, challenge you to pause the video now and to just kind of sit back. It's one of those things where you have to kind of just like, oh, wow, and, right? and kind of meditate and think on it. What does this mean? Paul, no way in this chapter, says to not sin, to not do this, you, know, you shouldn't sin, anything like this, but he talks about dying and not living in it. What do you think it means? Pause and think about it for a little bit. Now, welcome back, assuming you did take some time. Let me read verses 6 and 7. He says, We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. So following verse 2 and then now 6 and 7, we see that, you know, we sin because we have not died to sin and we are living in it, right? I'm not just talking about living in a life that does lots of sins, uh, not, not so much, but we are living in sin. We live sinfully because we have not died to it. And so, uh, in, or in order to be resurrected uh, into new life with Christ, we need to die to sin. Interesting thought, interesting image, right? What does it mean? How do we do this? So the question then is, are we living life, right? Like our book, Living Life, our devotional. That's why it's called that. I love the name. I love the name. There are so many puns and just, yeah, it's endless. But are we living life according to the Word of God or are we living sin? That is the question. Again, still not a satisfactory answer uh, or image, conclusion, but yeah. Are we living life or are we living sin? Because sin is so much more than a very long list of things to do and things not to do. Just as our lives are on the line, we have to understand that sin affects our lives. Not just section, parts, and different times and actions in our lives. It affects the entirety of our lives because it controls and directs our very lives, every day, our attitudes and everything that goes with it. So as we end today, do you want to be a good Christian? Do you want to be holy? Do you want to be righteous um, and so forth? And I'm sure we would all say yes, we who are believers and disciples. Do you want to be a good disciple, right? Do you want to be growing and maturing in Christ? Yes to all of these things. Very often we think about things that we, don't, we, should, we should not do, we must not do, that I have to stop in my life and so forth. But a common misconception about sin that we see today is that sin is not so much about the things that we do, shouldn't do and not do, but it is life and death. Do we live life? Or do we live sin? And tomorrow, you know, this is going to be unpacked a little bit more. Right now, it might be a little more confusing, but you'll see more tomorrow. So please tune in tomorrow, read and do tomorrow's devotional because it's going to flesh it out. But 
Is our life being affected, controlled and directed by sin or by God and His Word? I think that is the pressing question for us today. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your word, Lord, uh, that sometimes it's a little bit hard to understand and follow, but Lord, it really guides our, our lives uh, and our hearts, Lord. So we pray for your understanding, oh God. Um, even for me, I've been struggling and trying to simplify, uh, to convey uh, the message of today's passage about sin. May you guide our lives. May your word be the light, the lamp unto our feet and our steps, light and guide our path, O God, so that we will live life according to the eternal life, the eternity and the word of God, and not live sin and all its controls, its directions and its, and its effects, O God. Help us to live life according to you, to live life with you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.